So how does it feel to be on a podcast for the first time? <laughs> I am used to um, being on the other end, asking the questions, controlling the situation. Does that make you nervous? I don't know. It does, because I don't know what I'm going to be asked. <laughs> what kind of podcast do you think I have? You have a great one. Wow. Some of, the ones, some of the ones that I've seen, I can't tell you that I've seen all of them. But wow. You know, that not, I've a, seen. not a great yeah. one. You have a great one. You have one with some great potential, but I'll put it that way. One with great potential? Yeah. Are you going to share which one it was? Huh? Are you going to share which one? The episode with you in the barbershop with the gentleman, I forget his name. Craig. Learned a lot about you, by the way. <laughs> great. What'd you learn? I'm interested. Those, I mean, those were great. First, I, I want, I want to go back and do that. We had to take a break because schedules, and then, uh -huh. and then obviously, I'm not in the country anymore, so uh, that's kind of hard to do. And yeah, scheduling is tough. Like, I want to continue doing this with him, but the concept of being able to have more conversation in a barbershop and like how representative that was of just yes. like two oh man there's a lot of there's a lot of themes there safety right i don't know if a lot of i think specifically like black folks folks of color uh -huh. their salons and barbershops are like it's like sanctuary that is true. You know what's interesting? I don't think I've seen uh, a, a salon or a beauty shop talk kind of podcast before. I've seen it done in barbershops, yeah. not the beauty salon. So that, I don't know, you might you may have just opened something up. Well, I wanted to do one actually in, in a salon. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the goal was to do, was to keep working at it and get to the point where we were doing it was going to become a production but that was my vision it was going to become a production where we actually had people getting their hair cut while we were doing it right and i know that that takes work that, that that's that's taking it to the next level when you can do something like that and i knew how much work but i also wanted to do one, I just wanted to talk to a hairstylist or a stylist, period. And uh, that was more difficult than I expected. Um, what? Um, I think hours of scheduling was tough. And also, well, my idea, when I first put the idea out there, I was like, oh, I'd love to have some people, I'd love to have some people in there. And that was a no-go. Right, because that goes back to this idea of safety and like presentation, right? And I think a lot of people are really sensitive about look. I mean, I don't know. I, I haven't been to too many salons before. I've been in a couple barbershops. But in barbershops, you know, like people, I think it's completely okay to see people before they come in when they're like, "Yo, I haven't got a haircut." Right. It's a whole different process when you're like, "Yeah, homegirls got to like get under a dryer and then we got." wash your hair and then it's probably you know going in maybe not the most flattering time you know what it's funny you mention that because i i got my you know, my beautician and i were talking about that she had she was planning on doing some kind of venture with like a um a barber where they're going to come together and have like a you know barber shop and a beauty salon and interesting then, Right, but then she was thinking about how <laughs> how women come in but prior to getting their hair done, and that 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 space being invaded by mm -hmm. men, mm -hmm. right? Because you're yeah, I mean you're just super vulnerable when your hair is like a mess, right? So I just thought that was, that was funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think women would feel super. I don't. For me, I, I'll speak for myself. Sure. Well, they always feel super comfortable coming in um, to an environment with a bunch of men around getting their hair cut. And, 
I look hot as mess. And then you got to see my hair when it's wet. And then you got to see when it's blown out. And then you got to, nah, I don't want you to see that process. <laughs> why not? Why, why don't you want some, a guy to see that process? Because, I mean, unless it was somebody that I was like a significant other, I was, you know, someone I was comfortable with and probably have seen it like a million times before, but like a bunch of men and I don't know, no, it's like- Not a, not a potential date. No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right, no, it's too soon for all of that. Like I shouldn't, can't- Shouldn't we all be, shouldn't we all want to see our, you know, what people are like in their most raw, vulnerable states? Yeah, but not up front. Not up front. We gotta work on that. We gotta work. Yes, we gotta. So, that. Okay. okay, so let's. You're dating someone. Uh -huh. How long? Cause how long does it take for you to like get comfortable and like kind of show them your. Raw, raw it depends self. on how comfortable I was with them before. So if it's if it's a guy that I just met like completely like if it was a, if it was a guy that I've known for years and we just decided to date versus a guy that I just met, yeah, um, it'll probably take a little longer. If it was a guy that I've known for years, like I don't know, it could take you know who knows what can happen. Oh, I don't. Yeah. At any time, and by that time, like I wouldn't care. I was like, I know this guy already. Who cares? Who cares? Huh? Um, Right, who cares? A new guy, yeah, we gotta work up to that. Hmm. I, I, I don't know how you would feel about, you know, my my hair, whether it's natural or how how you would feel about me wearing a bonnet or a, a you know, uh, a scarf, you know, having my hair wrapped at night. Like, we, I gotta, I gotta know how you feel about that. Not that I'm a change. Ooh, damn, <laughs> not I'm not changing shit. Right, I'm not changing that. Like, <laughs> if anything, I gotta have a silk pillowcase. We gotta be at least cool with that. But, I learned um, about I learned about those at yeah, uh, I gotta, Gopher State. I gotta and, get to know who you are and how you feel about these things. Like, I ain't just gonna throw it on you. Silk pillowcase. I learned that <laughs> real quick. I had no idea what the hell a silk pillowcase was. Yeah, Actually. Yeah. You know what? That's not true. I knew, like, obviously I've seen one, but I didn't understand, like, what the reference meant. Like, I didn't get that part. And then when I got it, I was like, oh, yeah, I guess it kind of makes sense. Like, yeah, you want something. Right. I soft. think yeah, every guy who's, who's out here dating should have a set of silk pillowcases. Add it to the list of everything that you need. Yes. That don't mean you have to use them, but you just have to have them to pull them out just in case you need them. Is it just as important as condoms? There you go. Just as important as condoms. Great. <laughs> All right. Condoms, check. So pillowcase, check. Good to go. You haven't, sh you haven't showered yet. You haven't got a haircut yet. You haven't done anything, but you got those two. Pillowcase, yes. Okay. Next time, next time. Next time I'm uh, talking to talking to a friend of mine or something, I'm just gonna say, "Hey, man, look, I got an inside tip. <laughs> make sure you have the make sure you have the pillowcase." Right. I'm telling right. you, the woman will, will see you differently. Like, yep. like oh, he, he knows. He knows. I, to, I mean, that's really the only person I've heard that from was majority black woman that I dated. I haven't really heard that from other other women. Hey. Really, the only people I know who talked about that was like women. Maybe that would be maybe they should try. Honestly, it would change their lives too. I could imagine. I mean, I don't see it being harmful unless right. you're like allergic to silk. Right. Yeah, then it'd be. I mean, it's good for your skin. It's better for your hair. Is it? Well, I don't know about that. I feel like it is for me. I was about to say. I feel like silk. You can start sweating, and then silk absorbs like. Yeah. I don't know. I don't really know what I'm talking about. That that hot, what we do know is that it's good for your hair. Right. Right. Exactly. Good to maintain hair. Okay. Uh, well, now that we got your dating life taken care of, uh, 
what else is going on down in uh, Southern California? Southern California. Uh, you know what? Let's see. Whether I was here in Southern California or the Bay Area, I, I'm just going through a transition personally. Um, <clears throat> I'm going through a transition for the last right. Six and I'll tell you, years. I'll tell you what. <laughs> so I learned something new, right? Which is something so basic, but I had to ask myself, like, why in the heck haven't I heard this before? Because when I heard it, it was like, oh wow. Um, I watch Ten Rules uh, to Success by Evan Carmichael. It's like a YouTube channel, right? He takes celebrities and you know, um, make videos about their. Of success. So I recently watched one about, or yeah, it was on Barack Obama. And there was one rule of his that really stood out to me. And that was, and don't quote me on this because I'm sure I'm not saying this exactly the way that he said it, but it was basically don't think about what's in what you want to um, be and where you want to be, okay. but think about what you want to do. So Probably a part of like why I've been going through these transitions in my life for like the past six years. Yeah. Is because I've been thinking about what I want to be. Yeah. And where I want to be. But when you ask yourself those two questions, like you're going to get two completely different answers. I think it's a great. But, I think, yeah. Like, what do you want to be versus what do you want to do? And mm -hmm. even Bill Obama hates the question, like, when we ask kids, like, what do you want to be, right? Yeah. And, and, and I agree with her. It was like, you should start asking them, like, what do you want to do? Um, but anyway, so that kind of inspired me to do some evaluation. That along with, like, you know, a, a string of events that kind of, you know, that was going on. Some good, some bad, some unexpected, some tragic. Um, not just to me, but to, you know, people that I know. People around you, yeah. People around me. And um, yeah, I had to do some evaluation. And that plus that plus the fact that time is moving past, moving by a lot faster. Hmm. I don't know if you've noticed, but it feels like time is moving <laughs> a lot faster. I can't, I wish I could agree. So before, yes, now, I've, been, I've been in Jamaica for a month now. Yeah. And Time doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Why do you say that? I haven't heard it in conversations. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's some. It, that's one of the one of the first things I noticed here. I wasn't talking about time. What time am I going to? What time are we? What? Where? You know what I mean? That's something that dominates our conversations. I think in, in the states, yeah. mm -hmm. like we're constantly worried about what time it is. Like there's the next thing to do something there's something planned and maybe that's just maybe that's just in the places that we've been i'm generalizing obviously right. i think that there's some places yes we're in the states where maybe things are a little bit slower where people don't necessarily put so much emphasis on time but time has slowed down significantly like i don't have make it Yes. Oh, completely, completely. And I'm bit like, you know, I'm super busy. You know, like during the week, you're asking me, what am I doing during the week? You know, <laughs> I, uh, you know, this, this past week, Monday through Thursday, I barely, I barely stepped outside because, you know, I'm finishing the master's program. So I got to write a paper. I'm I don't want to talk about that. Go ahead. I said I want to talk about that, but we'll get to that. Did you just turn into the host? Look at you tapping no, back I, in. Yeah, yeah. You were like, yeah, I'm not comfortable with this. I need to ask you questions. <laughs> um, yeah. So either way, yeah. Doing. I mean, like I said, internship. Uh, started a new job. Uh, adding more to my plate. Doing work with Love Lab. And 
and then you know like you said doing the work on yourself yeah for, for sure there's been quite a bit of quite a bit of that quite a bit of reflection uh, but in that reflection time to slow down so either way um, with all those things you have to do you don't think about time i do but i don't uh i do sometimes but for the most part i've really tried to focus in on i tried to i've not focus i've tried to remove the conversation of time gotcha i've tried to remove it there's some obviously there's deadlines yeah obviously there's things that need to be done by a certain time uh, but i really tried to Kind of similar to what you were talking about like what do you want to do like i just i sounds kind of woo -woo, but like actually i take that back it's not woo, -woo. it's um sometimes i get wrapped up in things yeah and with everything that i have going on it's the great thing is it's starting to like be like a cohesive unit. All these different parts of my life are like starting to like hone in on each other. I'm like, oh, great. I'm starting to put the pieces together. Oh, I'm starting to, um, it's starting to connect. Gotcha. You know, not to say that starting, but in a different way, in a different way. So, gotcha. so yeah, which is why, you know, I think, Yours, as, as much as you were like, oh, yeah, I don't know if my story, like, what do you want to talk about? I'm like, yo, man, you're, you got a pretty, you got a pretty unique story. No story. I, I do. Um, but going back to the timing, the time thing, right? Yeah. It's kind of hard not to think about it when, um, you know, people who are passing away, same age. Mm. Mm. So, <clears throat> Yeah, I had to start thinking about it because um, basically, like, I had to make sure that what I'm doing now, after thinking about what it is I want to do, I had to make sure that what I'm, whether or not what I'm doing now is aligning with that. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, after thinking about all that stuff, like, I, I actually had to, like, let some things go. <laughs> I had to let some things go. I had to, to be honest with myself about some things that are kind of coming to an end. Um, and being comfortable with that because I feel like a new chapter is, is opening. But with that new chapter, um, it's kind of like starting over. But <laughs> then you're thinking about like, okay, well, how much time do I have here? on earth to like start over so i mean it's super difficult to not like think about time um i am however working on being more present in the time got you um yeah because that that was that relieves a lot of anxiety <laughs> um but but anyway so so this transition of life right what i'm transitioning to um, I love how you're dancing around right now, too. Oh, that's good. No, no, it's all right. I, I, I enjoy it. Dance um, <laughs> no, I mean, so in terms of like thinking about what I wanted to do, right? Mm -hmm. And thinking about what I'm doing now and thinking about what I've been doing in the past, right? I've always been the type of person that did everything. Mm -hmm. um, and I had to think about whether or not that is getting me anywhere right is that um in some ways yes it is allowing me to progress but not as much as i probably could be if i just you know focused on one thing mm -hmm. so that's you know kind of that had that played a lot into what you know the things that i had to kind of cut off um when you say cut off are you talking about people cutting off or are you talking about I'm talking about dreams, aspirations. What? Yeah. What are we talking about here? Um, okay. So, 
I can be specific with this. So I, I recently had to let go of an internship. Um, an internship where that involved music um, and creating content, digital content, um, also graphic design and all that, that great stuff. And yeah. I, I enjoy doing it. Um, it's just that it wasn't aligning to what I want to do ultimately. Um, and basically what I want to do ultimately is provide not only value for myself, but on a, a larger scale of value for other people. So, um, so babes, so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm looking into the, this problem, right? So there's a huge, like, I don't know if you know anything about it, but there's a huge, um, knowledge gap there's a huge achievement gap in our in our youth right okay. yes and, yes yeah Come, absolutely right COVID's not helping that either the pandemic is like i mean i heard like it was kind of closing in but the pandemic just ripped it right apart again yep. um so i was you know i just started researching this problem and thinking about what i can do with my skills and my talents to help with this problem. Right. So that's where I'm, that's what I'm transitioning. Right. Um, so I'm doing a lot of um, research, you know, I mean, as you, you, you know, or may know that a child's development is tied to the family's income. And, yeah. and Right, so you you you've got these private schools. You got families that could afford private schooling, and then for those who can't afford that, they're almost the kids are almost twenty two months behind those that can afford private education. So I guess my my quest is to um, find a way to kind of close that gap. Now I can't you know do it you know by myself so that's why i said you sure about that you <laughs> can't do it just... right so right so just thinking about what can i do with what the, the, the skills and the talents that i have to to help close that that gap so that's where i'm i'm transitioning as you know a lot of people may or may not know like i used to i'm a producer i make music i, I currently teach music or i teach you know two young ladies how to um make beats pretty much um and mentor them um and you know i've done some good things some great things according to my standards you know i've got a song i got a song on spotify with 20 plus thousand streams like i didn't even expect that when i dropped it so i'm i'm good with that um, what's the song i didn't even know this huh i didn't know this oh well Go check it out then. I sent it to you. You know the song. I don't it's think called, it's called All On Me. All produced, on me. Produced by produced by me. I'm not an artist. I'm a producer. Produced by you. Yes. Produced by me. Um and who's the artist? The artist is Poppy Chulo TJ. Okay. He's a wonderful artist. Go check him out. Okay. Um uh, okay. Yeah, that's uh, so. Yeah, well, I I don't know if you said I don't know if you said that to me, but because that would have sounded familiar. I I did send it to you because you okay. reposted it. Oh wait, um, yeah. Oh damn, I did repost it. Um, but yeah, I think it has like maybe maybe almost 30,000 30, streams on it. But damn, 30,000 30, people. That's like a lot, right? That's a lot, right? That's a lot. I didn't expect that. So. And then after dropping that song, honestly, I felt like I felt satisfied. I mm. felt like I've got, I've done what I wanted to do in music. In so, terms of producing? In terms of producing. And right, so I'm like, okay, was that, I had to ask myself, was that all I wanted to do was just drop a song? And the, wow, the Interesting, answer, wow. <laughs> And the answer was almost like, yeah, like I'm, I'm completely satisfied, like with, you know, with the song, it was a, it's a dope song with a dope vibe to it. 
um people are listening to it and yeah like i'm i'm okay i'm yeah. i'm okay. like so the, the years of putting in you know the work to learn how to produce and mastering the craft of producing and stuff like that um has paid off for me um so now with teaching young ladies you know that same thing i'm kind of like passing the torch and transitioning to do other things so well it sounds like you're transitioning you are transitioning but you worked with kids and teaching music and mentoring before actually you know that hasn't stopped i was going to say that, the more i think about it you, you haven't really stopped maybe Maybe you're transitioning to like another level, or maybe you're making more of a commitment. Because I do, you know, in our conversations, you had like that. That's been one of the, the battles, right? Not not battles between you and I, but your the internal battle, right? Like, like okay, what do I want to do with music? Right. Like, clearly, have a talent for it. Uh, you see the value in teaching it and mentoring people so that they, you know, follow, yeah, follow in your footsteps or feel comfortable to even like go that way. Right. Uh, and yeah, now you're making, it sounds like you're making just more of a commitment. Like you see a social issue, like you're, you're, you're connecting yes. your talent to that social issue. Yes, but here's the thing, I'm not doing it. Oh, you're leaving music behind. I'm not exactly. Um, Something tells me you're not going to leave music behind, <laughs> no matter what you say. Uh, I'll probably, I won't leave it behind completely. No, I, do, I love music, right? And I always have that skill. So if I wanted to jump, you know, if I got bored one day and wanted to you know, make some music, I could do that. Okay. But um, no, like what I'm doing now is, and you just have to stay tuned. Yeah, yeah, no, we, we talked about this before. You said I'm not allowed to say one word. I ask you one question about what you're doing now. Because it's top top secret. Right. We don't want we don't want so, but I'm learning an, I'm learning a new skill and Love it. and I am, you know, it's because I have almost I feel like I've almost mastered music with the exception of some things. Like mixing has never been like my thing. But in the um, pr production side, is that what you mean? Production side of music. Yes. Okay. Um, I feel like it's it's time to start something new, but also with starting something new and learning new skills. What can you? What? Yeah. That. So yeah, you you have to to stay tuned to find out what that is. So no more like no more underground like beat competitions that you're gonna no. How did you find out about a beat competition? When you told me, you're like, yeah, you know, like I won this beat competition. Like immediate. Um, how did I find out about that? Yeah. Oh, I started, I got uh, connected with this uh, producer platform. It's called like iStandard Producers, not okay. like it's called iStandard Producers. Okay. And um, when I wanted to, when I started to like, when I got comfortable with letting, you know, my music be heard. Um, I started joining uh, you know, platforms like this to showcase my music. Yeah. So at the showcase, I met a gentleman um, who was the founder of Space Future Sound. Okay. Uh, space music organization that teaches, you know, hip hop, um, which also, you know, contributes to the development of, you know, youth, creativity, confidence, things of that nature. Okay. Um, on the side, he did beat battles. So oh. he, invited, he, he invited me to one. And it just so happened that I was, was the only woman. <laughs> I was uh, the only. Is that, was that a surprise though? Because I, I mean, music um, seems to be pretty it, dominated. It, it was not a surprise because in the showcases, I was the only woman. Ah, interesting. Now, what, what do you think that, what, what, well, I got to look at first before we get to that. Yeah. So when you go into this beat, like immediately when you told me that, like in my head, I just pictured this like 
very Hollywood, like, movie picture. Like, you went downstairs and there was, like, something from, like, 8 Mile or something. And you had your, like, your MPC or something on your side. And you're like, all right, yeah, here we go. I said, I did not have the MPC on my, I had a machine in my backpack. And the people who, okay, so this is in San Francisco, right? Okay. And I have parked in the Tenderloin and I nope. got in the car with like all this stuff. So I'm looking around, like you got people, you know, just hanging around yes. and I'm looking around and um, I asked, I asked this guy, I was like, hey, so can you just keep an eye, on my, an eye out on my car? Oh, you asked? Uh, uh... Um, I'm assuming. Yeah, because they, they, you know, they saw me take stuff out of the car. They probably, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, who knows? Somebody probably thought that there was more stuff in it. And, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Um, but yeah, I asked him to keep an eye out for my car. He was a nice guy. He was like, oh yeah, sure, sure. So I'm walking down the street with this heavy backpack yep. full of, uh, of production machinery mm -hmm. laptop and uh what is it the, the machine which is also like the npc but like a whole lot smaller um what else did i have a couple of other things i go in there and i'm here i'm there by myself i think there were a couple friends who were supposed to make it and, and didn't make it um i'm there by Maybe. myself what year is huh? this? When, when was this so 2000 and to say 15. 15. Okay. Um, so yeah, you know, um, I'm in there and I see women or whatever I'm thinking. What do you remember the name of the place? Was it like a it was like a, it was a bar. It was bar, okay. uh, yeah, it was in downtown San Francisco. I don't remember the name. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm seeing, you know, women there or whatever, and um, I'm thinking like, oh yeah, you know. They might be a part of the show, but none of them were. Yeah. None of them were. Now, let me tell you about this night, right? Okay. So there were people, the, the contestants that were there. Um, they had friends that were there. They had, you know, a couple of whatever. And here's the thing that kind of stuck out that I will never forget, right? So I'm battling round for round <laughs> with these guys. So how so how does it go? Like, you go once, they go once. Um, it goes by round. So uh, all how many of us? I think there was nine of us. Okay. And we all go one round. Yeah. And then we got some people that are eliminated, and then the people who you know one of the or that are not eliminated, they go the next round, and then you got more people that are eliminated. Okay. So it was just like round for round until. Like, it, we got to the bottom two, which is me versus another guy. Now, this final round, right? This guy, and then he's drunk. He was a supporter of the other guy. Uh, he jumped on a microphone <laughs> and started, uh, he started saying, I don't know exactly what, I can't remember exactly what he said, but just, just a bunch of nonsense or whatever, basically interrupting my set. Oh, damn, while you were like, while I was, yes. So they eventually had to escort him off. Now he hadn't done this the entire show. Until you got up there. Now, right, it's down to me and this other guy who I believe, from what I can remember, I believe was his friend. He jumped on the, mic, the microphone and just interrupted my set. I thought you were gonna say yeah. he was gonna start freestyling or something. I was like, damn! <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't care, but no, he, no. There was no yeah. freestyle, he was being disruptive. Um, so yeah, I end up winning and guess what? I got no congratulations from those contestants. All of them walked out. One was so mad. Like after he lost, he walked right out. Yeah. I mean, no one likes to lose and also. They didn't want to lose to women. I, well, I don't know. I wasn't there. I'm not, I, I could see that's a possibility for sure. No doubt about it. Um, and this wasn't the first time it happened. I was a, a special contestant for a uh, showcase 
that happened was it last year or yeah. maybe the year before 2019 um and after showcasing my music my you, a bunch of guys i think there was one other woman but a bunch of guys um after you know and if i hear good music i'm gonna say yo like that, that was, was nice cool. yeah you know spark up a conversation you know maybe we can collaborate whatever whatever yeah after i this is a huge story this right okay so there was a there's a producer he's a well-known producer who i was like a super fan of who was there and he's actually a judge right and i had gotten to know him not like super closely but i had gotten to know him over time and um i asked him before i went on because he had judged my very first showcase, right? And I messed up. I messed up on that showcase. Um, but anyway, so this was a chance I thought to redeem myself. He was there. So I asked him, I was like, hey, like, I'm gonna be playing. Like, can you let me know what you think afterwards or whatever? And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. So you can honestly, talk to the judges beforehand? I mean, he was actually, okay. I wasn't being judged. I was just like a special. Oh, um, that's right. You said a show. Like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You said like. I wasn't. Right. Yeah, I wasn't a part of the actual sixteen who were actually, you know, battling for to be winner. Okay. Um. So yeah, I, I went on stage, playing my music, and I'm looking over at him, and he's taking a phone call. <laughs> yep. I was so disappointed. He was. He wasn't paying attention at nope. all. I was so disappointed. Anyway, so after that uh got off stage and of course you know i didn't get any congratulations from any of the guys or any of the hey your music is good and yeah, any, of the, welcome, any of the guys none of the guys now the women women said the women came to me like hey i love this let's work blah blah blah, blah. The guys got no interaction from it whatsoever, unless I said, hey, like what you did up there was dope or whatever. And then they'll be like, oh, yeah, you know, you too, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, yeah, I've had some interesting showcase experiences. Mm. And I could say that it had to do with me being a woman. That's, that's valid. But, but yeah, I mean, but I, I feel like today things are changing, like um you see a lot more women um there's actually like a, a popular duo production duo mm. two, two women absolutely love they're called nova wave they produce for everyone and um they've done some some uh seminars some webinars over the pandemic or whatever and they will always tell the story about how they would go into the studio mm. and um they basically weren't given too much now they had work from everyone from beyonce to whoever and they still can go into the studio and not given any acknowledge acknowledgement respect anything else or whatever um so i don't know I, that that says i don't know a lot to me yeah um but then too, she also pointed out who it was coming from, right? So she would produce an urban song with, you know, certain producers. You can imagine what they look like. She would they would produce a pop song. What's with, an urban song? I'm not familiar with this genre. Rap, R and B. Rap, I don't know. I'm asking. Okay. Okay. So they would produce a. They would go in the studio and do some rap or R and B type okay. of thing. And this is the duo. This is the duo. Yeah. Yes. And they would get treated differently than you know them going into a studio where they were producing a pop song. Mm. They would where, you know who they're working with looks like. So. They get treated treated better on the pop side. Are you saying I'm not understanding? Are you saying that the people who produce that tend to produce more hip hop and R and B are one group of people? Are you saying that like is that? Is I don't want to like, say that they're 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 one group of people, but basically, you know, saying without saying is that they they're us. 
you know. So be be more specific. I'm not. I'm yeah, not. Black, black people are the producers of <laughs> the, producers the of the rap and R and B. In in these cases, in their cases, the case, the experiences that they're sharing. I'm not saying that this is every case. Okay. But soon when they would go into an environment, sing a rap or an R and B song yep. with you know other um, producers or songwriters that happen to be black, they're treated differently than going into an environment where they're producing a pop song with pop art with pop pop producers and songwriters who happen not to be black. Does so, yes. So you are, um, we're general, of course, well, maybe we're not. In your experience, most of the, or there's more writers and producers uh, in, in the pop genre that are not black, that are white. Am I saying, I'm not saying that most of them are, but in their cases, when yeah. they go into- Oh, when they, because they were black. The, different, different- uh, They're being treated differently by two, two different groups of people. Now that's interesting too, because, you know, I would, when I think about entertainment mm -hmm. and music, I, I do think it's such an, you know, listening to you and other people and being, I've observed some of those mm -hmm. kind of Hollywood music yeah. environments, and I've seen the way people treat each other. Yeah. And there's no doubt about it. Like, ah, uh, yes, for sure, there could be discrimination. I mean, it's clear there's discrimination based off of um, off of race. I've also just seen people treat each other badly, like. I don't give a shit if you're black. Like, like I don't give a shit who you are. Like, I don't care. I haven't experienced those type of situations. <laughs> but going back to um, their situations, like yeah. in my two experiences, yeah. the way that I've been treated have been by, you know, black people. Yeah. So. Or the way that I've been mistreated, or if you want to call it that, it's not that bad, but you know, I can still, I mean, you don't have to shake my hand or say congratulations or yeah. say that I'll be totally fine. But you know, they happen to be to be black, black guys. Um, the ones and, that you, the, the people that you were competing against? um the people that one the one that interrupted my show was a black guy yes yeah. and the guys that with the the guys that you know the, the last showcase that i did or whatever mm -hmm. like, most of them were black guys mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so um so i can almost attest to you know their experiences yeah but i'm not saying that this is everyone's experience. no no i i, I was Uh, in a lot of sessions that I've gone to, like, they've been cool. Now, they've, you know, some of them been a little outrageous, like, oh, I don't, you know, offering me things that I don't do. Like, ah, I'm good. But other than that, like. What do you mean offering you things that you don't do? Uh, drugs that I don't do, like. <laughs> and you're saying that's a bad thing? Uh, Is it bad? I, it's different. It's different for me. Like I, you know, I haven't been around those type of things. I used the wrong word. I didn't mean to say, is that a bad thing? Um, how did you interpret that? Was that something like, uh, that's like borderline disrespectful or were you like, oh, like you kind of like, you rock with me. Like you offered me something. Um, I probably thought of the, the second one, the, the, the latter, the, yeah, I guess they're, they're, they're cool. Yeah. They're offering us stuff, but then you can too, you can I almost tell that they do that to everyone. You know, this is like their thing. This is what they do. This is what they do. This is what they do. Um, but when I saw it, okay, do, are we allowed to, this is not some kind of PG podcast, right? <laughs> I 
you ever known me to be a PG person? I've never in my life seen anyone sniff coke up until. You know, I had a podcast about psychedelics, right? No, you didn't. I, I know I did see the title of it, but I haven't watched it. Yet, so. You can talk about whatever the hell you want on this podcast. <laughs> So, so up to that point, I had never seen anybody sniff coke. So okay. when I saw it, I was like, oh. It was, I don't know, it kind of gave me a feeling like this is, I didn't know what to feel, honestly. Sure, sure. Never seen this done before, you know? Mm -hmm. I've always seen it in like movies. Sure, like Hollywood. But then it also made me think like, okay, they really do do this. Like you hear stories about this being the entertainment industry. This being involved in the entertainment industry. Everyone does coke in California. <laughs> so when I saw it, I was like, okay, yeah, this is, I guess this is what they do. And yeah. I don't know, it was like super weird for me because I had never seen it in real life. I had uh, never seen it done in real life. Yeah. Um, and it was offered to me, and I was just like, ah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Good for you. Um, <laughs> good for you. Standing standing on your principles and your values. Yeah, I always felt like if I haven't, like, at the age I am now, if I had not tried it. Is that I'd where you're at in life? I'm not going to try it. Is that where you're at? Yeah, if I haven't tried it yet, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it, exactly. <laughs> well, good, good, good to know. So in the next couple of years, when you're transitioning into this new skill, and, totally and, and I see... I walk in and see you just lighting them up. It's like, huh, that's funny. You're the same person who said, I'm not changing. Hey, I'll, I haven't done it yet. I'm never doing it. What? No, no it's. I, I, I know, you know, myself and something new. Try, like, I'm hesitant about trying new, new things, especially when it comes to like ingesting it or consuming it. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, things, things of that nature, because I tried an edible the first time this is years ago and i ended up in the hospital like i just edibles <laughs> no fuck i mean that's edibles are no joke because it, it's a different way of in taking like that's going into your bloodstream that's different than smoking like yeah, yeah I and especially most people are clowns if, if they've made if this was someone who made it you have no way of really understanding how THC was like distributed throughout the food. Like it could have been a concentration in one piece. So there's no real way. Like the smallest piece. I was just like trying it for the first time. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like you could, you can jam pack something like weed into a mint. You can, you can jam pack THC into a mint. The mint's really small. You can, yeah. Like you said, go to the hospital for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I've had terrible experiences. Straight up paranoia. So how, I mean, you ever end up in the hospital or are you just like, I? Right. No, I mean, I, luckily I'm a, um, I have a weird fascination with like uh, perceived chaos. I have a weird kind of approach to like uncomfortable situations. It's like a, it's a challenge. I have a weird, I have, I have a weird fashion, fascination with challenges. Yeah. I enjoy them. I think there's lessons to be learned during them. Like if you can kind of slow down, you can slow down during a, during like a real challenge, and you're like, oh, yeah, okay, I got something. Yeah, I got something out of this. Like uh, when I'm swimming, like when I'm swimming in the ocean. There's definitely times where I'm like, man, this is crazy. This is this is no joke. And swimming while under the influence. I did, man. One of the worst decisions I ever made was I swam when I was on uh, LSD. Okay, tell me about that. <laughs> I was at a music festival and there was a lake, and I was like, oh yeah. You know, water will feel good. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got in and started swimming. And I think naturally I started swimming as in like I was, you know, working out. 
and and then I was like, wait, uh oh, wait, hold on, like this shit is kicking in. And so like I remember like stopping and just kind of being overwhelmed because I was like, oh, oh, oh no, I gotta get back, I gotta get back to shore right now because I'm getting too like. I was ready to float and just relax and like trip. Um, but I could tell, I was like, no, this is not, this is a problem. I was like, I'm not gonna have, I'm not having like, uh, I'm not, I'm not saying I wasn't in control, but I didn't feel all the way in control of like my motor function. Gotcha. So I was like, mm, let me go back. I gotta get back. I gotta get back. I gotta get back. Gotta get back. It was hot. Yeah. What, what kind of feeling does that give you? I'm curious. I'm living vicariously. Uh, you're talking about LSD? Yeah. Well, I think it all depends. Uh, depends on how much you take. You can take a microdose, you can take a full dose. I think a lot of introspection. Mm -hmm. Can definitely have uh, phenomenal hallucinations, uh, but I, more importantly, I think you re you're able to remove yourself out of the equation. When you're approaching things, there's like almost no more I. There's no more like, oh, I'm going to do this. It's like, no. There's no more you. You're just a. You're looking. You're able to break down a situation or a feeling. You're not saying like, I'm sad. You're like, what you're asking, what is sad? <laughs> okay. You're asking like, what does sad mean? What, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. when, when do I, when do I get sad? Or, you know, breaking down, yeah. Like you're just able, you're able to remove structure. Um, I've had a great experience, like up to, to give you an example, um, I had, I, I did LSD one time and I went in the backyard and had an interview with myself because I, I found out about an interview that I was doing, not like a podcast, but like a job interview. Right. And I broke down the job interview and I thought about like the, I put myself in the place of another person mm -hmm. and tried to think about what are they trying to feel like what questions are they trying to ask like what are you trying to understand about me from these questions understand more about the interviewer like what do i know what do, what is the little information i know about it and how do i connect all the like how do i connect all the dots are you thinking about this during the interview as the questions are being asked or no this is during my trip this is, I was in a backyard by myself, pacing, walking back and forth, thinking, breaking down, breaking down the interview that I had in head. So I was asking myself questions. Again, when I tell you like, it was with there, you take yourself out of it. Like I was able to go and be someone else or get inside someone else's thought process. But I wasn't having, and I was having a conversation, but it wasn't. So when you come down for that, do you still have like that, those? Yeah, you're still, oh yeah. It's not like you were, gone, like, uh, it, it, it's not like you checked out. I mean, there's people who have bad trips, but I, I also don't know what else is going on with them, right? Like. Um, there's arguments like when, when people have breakdowns or whatever, yeah. well, you could have been like, let's say, uh, let's say you're schizophrenic, right? Well, what if the LSD just hit something that triggered your schizophrenia? Yeah. That was something that was already there. I mean, it's a, it's a concept. I'm not saying this is true. I, I, I don't know, but if there's something already there, like if, if, I, um, most of the time when I'm talking to people about drug usage, I always ask them like, yeah, so what's going on with you? What else are you taking? You know what I mean? Like, 
which I mean, the realization is majority of the country is on prescription medication. There's a lot of people on antidepressants, you know, and it, and it works for them. Um, also extremely harmful on your body, extremely harmful on your body. So again, what's happening, like, Going back to that, you know, that concept or that idea of what it was like to watch someone do coke for the first time. Well, you'd seen somebody do coke before, but you saw the Hollywood version, right. like the glamorous, like, I don't know, maybe there was an attractive woman around and like, it was, it was cool. You know what I'm saying? Like everything was cool. Scarface kind of stuff. Yeah. Like you equate it with money, you equate it with like success. And, yeah. yeah. So I think that that's the same thing for any drug. You know, there's a lot of, um, now that's changing, right? We're having much more normalized conversation about drugs. I mean, mm -hmm. there's people using these things, clinical research to help heal. Right. So yeah, the more we go, I mean, you know, like I said, the more we go into the history, the more you understand the history, why these drugs have been um, criminalized? Mm -hmm. uh, you see how how uh, how much bullshit. It's really bullshit. Yeah. It really, we scared people into thinking that. Like, same with. I mean, weed was the same way. Yeah. Weed was the same way for so long. We're like, oh yeah, smoke weed. And all these black and Mexican men are gonna rape your rape your wife. Or that's going to lead to other drugs. Yeah, are like, coke. I mean, people have been doing heroin for a long time. People have been doing coke for a long time. Like, all in psychedelics. Oh, they, I mean, but this is only going by, you know, what I've seen the Hollywood. Of course, no, no. It, it, that's why I say it's it's just been this. It's uh, it's been politicized. It was part. But of, it also know. seems like. You know, working in the, the tenderloin and having to walk through um, a bunch of, you know, homeless people who who uses, I don't know, maybe heroin or whatever it is, mm -hmm. needles on the ground or whatever. Yeah. This doesn't look like a good thing. No, I don't think so. I think that's when you start to have the conversations about purity. There's this, there's this professor, this black professor who recently came out. I don't know. It's funny. I, um, he just openly admitted that he uses heroin. Um, I think he's at Columbia. Um, but he uses a very pure form of it. And I think it's the same thing as when you're talking about food. If you eat processed food, shit, look at, look at our country. What's what's the difference? When you see a really, you know, when you see an extremely obese person, mm -hmm. you know, they're not well. They're probably on other. And I would make the argument: once you get there, you're probably on more prescription medication, right? Right. Until you can't afford it, and then that's when you start using really are like the pure forms of heroin or like heroin cut. With Fentanyl. Yeah. So yeah, I think that you know it's it depends how you look at you know it depends how you look at these things, but um, yeah, no, that's for sure. When you walk down Central and San Francisco, like, and then that also begs the argument, like, well, what is going on that's so bad that this is what you want? That's how I look at it. Like, what is going on with you that's so fucking bad? This is better. Like this is better than whatever you have going on. And, and we know, man, people go through that they did not sign up for. Shit, they didn't sign up for. Like straight out of the gate, they've been born into families where they're abused, you know, emotionally, sexually, physically, whatever. You know what I mean? Like and they didn't have any choice. I mean, do you think those are things that can be? Resolved within, resolved with, out any kind of, because I hear that, you know, those, those kinds of things, not the actual 
form of acts, you know, the, the abuse and all that stuff, but mm-hmm. dealing with them, right? Or the inability to deal with them has a lot to do with um, the disconnection with yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I think that there's, can you do it? When you say do it on by yourself, you mean without? No, I mean, I mean, without drugs, right? Like, I, I'm, I'm assuming professionals have to be involved in some way, fashion or form, but like, can it be? Sure, I, I think the most important thing, first and foremost, is community, your, the relationships you have with I think strong relationships with people are, are the first part. Without those, you can do all the drugs in the world, but I don't know if you're going to be able to, I don't know if you're going to be able to heal without people. Right. So, so to answer your question, yes, I think you can. Um, yeah, you can. Sure. So, so, I, yeah. I, I know I'm not the host, but I do want to get your take on something, right? Yeah in your endeavor um, in grad school, do you feel like school could use a little more innovation? Because when I hear that people are still writing papers, like (laughs) the question is why? 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 Trust, Trust me. That is something. Writing a blog or, or other, or showing other of or showing another way that you understand the information instead of writing a paper like you, you know, evolving like why are we still writing papers because organizations traditional organizations like academia take a long time to change. Things don't happen very quickly. So I 100% agree with you. These are conversations that we're having right now in graduate school. Why, what is this paper, how, how is this paper helping? Now in some ways I think papers, depending on, depending on what area of study you're in, I think papers are, are helpful. I, I still think that there's a place for them, but also dependent on what, depending on what you're doing. Um, but there should be some flexibility there. Uh, as someone who is finishing their social work uh, graduate program and wanted to work with people and not really wanted to go into research, I can't tell you how this is going to make me a better social worker. And that's what we're trying to get to. But this is the other part. There's accreditation standards. So those accreditation standards have to change. Right? And those things will change, but it's gonna take a lot of time. Well, I almost feel like, you know, institutions are being left behind because the world is changing. There's a, oh, absolutely. There are institutions the people it's the people being left behind you know there's I, i've never been so happy in my life to to go back to school for social work because there's so much we've gotten to a place where we've got to a place where we need so much direct human service you know what i mean like the culture specifically like we lived in a, a good time span for the last 10 years where it was like, what idea do you have? Can you create an app? Can you create a technology that's useful and something else? Not meaningful. Don't create something meaningful. Just create something that can make money or that are like someone can use to like, the creation part is cool, but why are you creating? Right? Like, I would assume this is similar in music, right? We've had this conversation before. When you stop making music because you like you're really interested in making the music, but you just want to put a song. In. Like, I'm just gonna put it out because then somebody will buy it. But just it's, I don't like I don't really care for it. 
it follows some formula. Right. Um, but I also got to pay my bills. So that's kind of the dilemma, right? You're like, well. You know, what that's, a, that's a huge dilemma. And a part of the reason why I um, kind of had to like separate myself. Like when I felt like um, people were, you know, not felt like, but like when people were approaching me with these ideas and the way it has to be done for these certain uh, platforms and things of that nature, that's when I lost interest. Yeah. Because it no longer became um, one. Yeah. There's guidelines that I have to follow with art. Like this is music. You know, yeah. It's supposed to flow freely you as, as a creator um but yeah once you know i started getting these these inquiries about making a song about this that caters to this audience with this certain type of style that goes on this platform yeah. like, um don't get me wrong i tried but it you know it wasn't very successful i'll put it that way I mean, it's. I think there's. You have, people, you have people that are great at that. That that will that can do that all day, and that's how they make their living. Um, whether or not they enjoy it would be the question. But what do you think the long term effects of that? Um, Specifically, in I'm asking you as like an artist, because that's different, right? Like, I mean, you can make the argument that everything's an art, but like music. Like when you're just putting stuff in there and you're like, man, this is paying the bills. The the long term effects would be, you know, something that I, that I'm going through. Like this is not this is not fun. It takes the fun out of it and you just begin to lose um, interest in it. But that's 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 for me. Um, some people may find fun in that structure. Um, yeah. And again, and, and don't get me wrong, like, this is a skill that I developed over years. So I always have that skill. So if I wanted to make music for the hell of it, I can do it and I can do it freely. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, that, for me, and, you know, having to, to, to do that and being approached with those type of things just took me out of I. I, I'm just not that type of person. I, I, I can't have constraints in creation. Yeah. Now, sometimes that, that causes you to be a little more innovative by like, I guess, like working with what you got. Um, but, you know, I'm inspired by thinking outside of the box. I'm inspired by like big ideas. Big, big ideas. Gotcha. I, I might just like where you know I'm different from you know a lot of people, and there might be a lot of people who feel the same way I do. But so yeah, it depends on what you're what you're inspired by. If you got a family, you just need to feed, feed your family, and you know you're getting jobs of making certain type of music and certain styles and certain arrangements. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Then, okay. It's just like anyone else going to work. Uh, yeah, I see. Well, this is the thing. I this is where I don't think this is different. You've made quite a bit of sacrifices pursuing music. You have sacrificed comfort. Absolutely. Like you have sacrificed arguably peace of mind, safety, All of it. everything. I remember you telling me like, yep, yeah, leave it in my car. But you know what though? Okay, so even with going back to the transition, right? Yeah. I've been able to look back at things. Yeah. And see, like you said, see how it all ties together. So yeah. if I had not made that sacrifice for music, yeah, I wouldn't have gotten to the place where I am now. It's true. I believe that. And having the resources that I have now, having the job that connected me to what I'm doing now. So 
it all worked together for good. Now it sucked, but <laughs> no, I think that there's something to be said about going through those. Um, you, there's something about getting to that just challenging point in life where you get those lessons that, that you wouldn't get if you don't get there. Um, you know, there's some people who are able to, you know, maybe people who are born into like a lot of money or success who, who might be able to like not have to go through that. They might have some rock bottom, um, but they don't have to worry about putting shit on the line. You know what I mean? But I do think even those people, though, the more I think about it, you, you still go through something. Like it. It's life. So yeah, when I meet people that, you can almost hear it. I think that's a difference. You can hear it in people's voices or their stories. You're like, dude, you haven't gone through anything. I was like, you're not going to pick that lesson up until you get there. Right. You know, like whether there's this, um, I haven't had her on yet, but, um, you know, swimming and there's a, a distance swimmer that I want to have on because she's she's done I don't even know how long she's on. Uh -huh. 12 12 15 miles or something like that and that not only we're not talking about I mean that tra I've, I've done a six mile before but I remember that training and I was like man this is crazy this is Insane. Like, what, what am I doing? Like, I don't want to do this thing. So, someone who's like a professional, she's a professional distance swimmer. Yeah. You know I mean? Yeah. I, I'm, you know, like, think about like endurance athletes are, you know, maybe fighters or music artists as well. You know, I think you have to go to that place. Like, I remember when we were talking about you know, when I first started DJing, kind of going through. Yeah, I just, I just remember going through it, like sitting there with this damn machine, like I. Process of learning. Yeah, like I can't, like this sounds terrible. I can't stand how bad it sounds. <laughs> like why? Is... And then right, and then eventually you learn you learn that you have to be okay with it, yeah. and that's what and like back at you know. But I wasn't willing to sleep in my damn car. That's why I'm saying. I'm like, yo, you. I think you had aspirations for like, if you want to DJ or do DJ. Sure. If I wanted to, then maybe. Right. So. So yeah. what was it? What was it the point? I got to think. Okay. So what was the night you're sleeping in your car and you're like, I can't do this anymore. Um. No, fuck that. What was the first night you slept in your car? What the hell is going through your head? Um, honestly, I heard of people doing it all the time. Like you hear, yeah. you hear celebrities talk about this stuff all the time. It was like if they could do it, I could do it too. Like that's honestly <laughs> most uncomfortable thing like i wasn't really worried about safety honestly um interesting right because, i like it so i i had parked my car at an, in a gym parking lot that was open 24 hours when people were going in and out 24 hours and it's funny is in la there's a lot of us doing the same shit so i was gonna say right like <laughs> probably well, so there was like a whole parking lot lined up full of people <laughs> sleeping in their cars it was like a little community um <laughs> so i i was never worried about safety but the thing that took a toll on me was uh um the actual the physical discomfort okay um i you know, couldn't stretch out my legs i just yeah i couldn't get comfortable and sometimes i caused swel uh, swelling in my my ankles yeah and, yeah poor circulation and, stuff like that but i was working out too like that was like the only way that i could actually get ready for the day was you know going to the gym use the shower you know get, yeah. get my teeth and all this other stuff i figured while i'm doing that i may as well work out <laughs> so. 
Well, I'm going to get out of this gym, showering and getting ready for work. I may as well work out. So, um, yeah, that, the, it was just the physical discomfort that really got to me. Uh, also, too, um, I was working a part-time job. I still had, like, financial obligations. Sure. So, um, yeah, I was broke. Doing, you had to, doing what you had to do. I was I was super broke, so it was, it was those two things. Like all right, I got to figure out, gotta figure out something. You know how they say like there like there are a couple things that would make you change your life, right? Being broke, working hard, and not forgetting the other thing. But um, but with the you know all of the disappointments, I felt broken hearted. So. So yeah, so being broke, brokenhearted, and physically um, broken. Okay. Yeah, physically broken. Physically broken. broken yeah. I gotta, I gotta figure this, this thing out. And had honestly, yeah. I don't know how much longer. I probably could have gone longer, but the pandemic hit. So I was like, I can't be in the streets anymore. <laughs> <laughs> pandemic. I probably would have gone longer, honestly. Really? Yeah, I probably would have. I probably would have gone longer, but you know, in some ways, I'm grateful for the pandemic because um, you love that all the people it's put me in. It's put me in, you know, situations where that kind of did did well for me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, a lot of people can't can't say that. But but for me, yeah. Like, yeah, no, it's I, tough. I still, you know, still have my 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 health, and I say this particularly because um, I was working at the time it like hit right. This was like March of last year. Yeah. I was working part time, but training to go full time. Yeah. But the pandemic hit, and we lost our job. My my position, um, they got rid of it over the the time and then because it, it was you know it wasn't needed people weren't you know physically inside of work for school so they weren't there at school so yeah. there's no need for the position so what ended up happening was um as you know i was on unemployment yep. was still doing you know my kind of side hustle kind of things um but I think it was August. It was August, and unemployment was starting to run out. I had to start figuring out what I was going to do. It was getting real. <laughs> it was super real. And then I got this email from my job saying, "Hey, um, hey, do you want? Do you want this position?" Yeah. And this position just so happened to be the position that my coworker was training for. Now. Because of the pandemic, he had to move out of state okay. back home to Arizona. The company doesn't, they couldn't hire you yeah, know, yeah. anybody who lived out of state. So I ended up getting the position that he had been training for, which was kind of like bittersweet because I was trying to figure out like what I was going to do. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you know taking you know this this position and, and it all kind of worked out for me not so much for him um but then you know accepting the position and working open up other opportunities and other aspirations and that's kind of where i'm headed so that's why i say the pandemic has been somewhat good to me don't, don't get me wrong i had a lot of anxiety <laughs> Had a lot of anxiety where, you know, worried about my health and worried about, you know, whether if a little cough was the beginning of something or. <laughs> everybody went, everybody went through it in those exactly. first, those first few, uh, first few months. Or yeah. maybe first, I don't know, for a while, actually. I don't know, like the first year. Like, I think first. I'm okay with it, like, now. Okay. But, but, yeah, like, it, it lasted for a long time. <laughs> so. <sighs> I can't get yeah, I mean, still can't. I mean, shit, I left. I was like, I can't do this anymore. I gotta go. So what is it like, like being in another country and 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 
reading about like i don't know if you pay attention to news or anything but what's it like being in another country and seeing america from another country we have a lot to learn it's very clear that you know i think our evaluation of other countries i mean my own like i have so many it's just interesting how you check your biases at the door like there's so many biases that come up when i'm here right like, are not even biased. Well, maybe it's bias, and it's also just privilege. Like standing in line for an ATM for twenty minutes. I'm sitting there like, I'm I'm a pretty patient person, but I'm like, what the fuck, man? Like, God, like, this is crazy. I'm like, this isn't crazy. It's just I come from a place that has so much convenience, and I have no clue what it's like to be in a place of like. Where this is a reality, like this is a reality. It's a normal. Um, I uh, I've been eating extremely healthy here. Like I'm probably I'm probably down ten pounds since I've been here, just because I'm eating really nutrient rich food and like I'm getting sunlight. Is that like intentional or is it just? Really? it's available you can eat that way here it's like dude i'm eating i mean i've tried it's crazy so have you ever heard of jamaican um kfc no so there's kfc here but they use everything from here there's no it's not it's it's they put their own spin on it but that's also part of the the country and the regulations they put on food got to think like there's food like the chicken i'm eating was probably killed two hours ago. like there's chickens running around you know, like there's no massive plant somewhere just slot you know what i mean like that's not that's not happening um people are constantly outside people are constantly moving now it's interesting i've noticed uh, I mean, oh, so i was saying now this is up uh, again unchecked bias i'm able to afford that here people living here not everyone can afford that because eating healthy can be very expensive um, it's similar it is very similar um, but the access Sorry, access right. access is like oh it's right there it's right like i go to the store and, and there is no like damn i gotta keep looking on the back of labels like it's like nah man it's, it's like there's no there's only four ingredients in food there's not ten wow. so uh, yeah i think those things um uh god yeah being outside let's see what else like i hear the suggestion that people especially you know african Americans, should experience living outside of the united states it really should it's good it's good it's good to normalize what it, it's good to normalize what we were accustomed to at norfolk state to a certain extent you know, when i go out and i see the fishermen the fishermen are black when i go see a bank teller the bank teller is black when i go see the taxi cab driver the taxi cab driver is black you know um you're just normalizing all of these things that you normal you might not necessarily see you know uh, but then again you know there's a ton of i mean there's you know, the jewelry stores are owned by indian people the, the supermarkets are owned by um the supermarkets the supermarkets are definitely uh, not all of them, but a lot of them are by Chinese. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but also it begs a different question. Oh, okay, so where's, are we dealing with something very similar here as in the States? You know, um, and I'm just learning more and more about the country, honestly. There's, there's a lot of very fascinating history in, in this island and its, its, uh, its role. Its, yeah, it's role in slave trade, 
just the Caribbean in general is really, really fascinating to think about all these different islands. Um, how's the how's the what? The oh man, we could go on for hours. Um, Honestly, I would like we could talk we could talk about this offline, but you know. Oh no no, I mean yeah, like um, they have on public TV. There's K through 12 curriculum because mm -hmm. of COVID on top of online education, if you do have internet access. And I think internet access is becoming more, again, this, there's, uh, I've been watching more and more Jamaican uh, TV to learn a little bit more about what's going on. But the, some of the things that they're talking about, would they would, I mean, they're talking about reparations on public TV. And I had to tell people like that conversation would I'm happy that President Obama actually had a recent conversation about it. Yeah, I mean, they're talking about, I mean, they're having people who've written papers on it. There, there's a there's an office, there's a task force that's talking about it. That's why I'm like, oh shit, this is crazy. You know, they're, they're talking, they're, they're having the conversations. I think the country is trying to make some strides. I, I, I need to learn a little bit more. I'm actually scheduling a, a podcast with Making gentleman who started a uh, digital education company with e-learning and stuff like that. So I'm interested to see kind of you know, what brought him to start a company, uh, an education company, right? Like, I, I think in the states, maybe in other places too, it's just not lucrative. People don't see education as a lucrative business. Um, but yeah, what's the difference here? Why did you start it? And I think he actually did some work under, I, I think he was selected as part of a program under the Obama administration um, where he you know, went to the States for a little bit, but he went to the University of the West Indies. But either way, uh, education, I, I think it's from my conversations with people, it's something that's like, important, at least still don't understand how the school structure they have like primary school and then they don't call it high school i think i think maybe second i need to learn a little bit more about it gotcha. um, but it seems to be much more of the culture and making it culturally relevant right so it's not just like we're teaching Sally, man. they're actually like when I was looking at the curriculum, like they have like like they bring in Jamaican culture into. I would love to see like their like their curriculum. I mean, again, like this is this is stuff like I actually think that uh, um would be very useful in this. <laughs> oh, I think there's quite a bit we could learn, no doubt about it. There's a hundred percent things we can learn from from other places um, uh, but that's also the complexity of the united states right we have so many different types of people right and our history i mean that's really where we're trying to get to right we're actually trying to acknowledge the foundations of our history uh, as a country and and, um, and that's one of the things i think that is very known like very um It's discussed. Like people know, about, about, like there's a there's much more conversation from my ear about the connection between here and Africa. Like yes, people from Africa, shit from here. You know what I'm saying? And obviously it's closer, but um, there's still yeah, it it's complex. It's complex because this country, the Jamaica, still looks to the U.S. as like the place. Like whatever the U.S. is doing, okay, we have to pay attention. Like, dude, I tell people to like, don't pay attention too much. Like, we, got, we, we got our, we got our own set of uh, circumstances. In all honesty. I was like, dude, you guys are lip, yeah. yeah we'll, we'll, we'll talk. Hey, we have you. Y'all have not had half a million people die. That's for sure. They've had like three hundred. Yeah, it's like wow. three, three fifty. Wow. 
It's because people are outside, man. They're working. They're they're working. They're moving. There's definitely like you know, there's larger people, but mm-hmm. you know, there's I know these people here, but people are moving. They're working outside, like not just sitting around. You know, so again, interesting to look at. Yes, third according to us, third world. Right. But there's some things we can definitely learn. Uh, so before we keep doing this on and on and on, you know you have I've been um transitioning. Taking your advice. Oh you started drinking out of glass bottles? Glass bottles. Look at you. Look at you taking care of yourself. Oh, this is my thing now, you know. It doesn't it taste much better though? It does. It does. I don't know if it's the brand, like I don't know if it's okay to show the brand. I don't know if it's the brand or just like just drinking water out of the bottle. But, what yeah. is this? Uh Spring Valley or something? Mountain Valley. Mountain Valley, there you go. Mountain yeah. Valley. But yeah, glass always better. Yeah, always. when I learned that, you know, it's not natural. It's not natural to be drinking water out of the bottle. Yeah. I mean, I still do sometimes, but because it's convenient, like you literally have to do either like there are no Whole Foods <laughs> where I live. Um, there is a natural food store that I have to travel however many miles to, but that's OK. Um, or I have to order this stuff online. Like it's not at the local grocery stores anywhere. So. Uh, before we go, uh, last question. What is something that you love or that you're in love with right now? Something that I love and that I'm in love with right now is something that I can't tell you. What's the something thing that you can't tell me? Stay tuned to. This is the new skill that I'm learning that I'm absolutely in love with. You can't say the skill? Nope. Okay, well, what? And here's why. Here's why. It's this thing, it's a personal thing to me, right? Yeah. <laughs> When you tell, and this has nothing to do with you, but like, I feel like I've, from personal experience, yeah. that when you're starting off in new ventures or endeavors and you start telling everybody before it really gets into motion, then it somehow doesn't get done. Yeah. Now, that's more on your part than anybody else's part, sure. but but I hear that sometimes you just got to keep things to yourself until, you know, you can at least get them going and show them that you're actually doing some work in it. So, <laughs> and I have, and I, I'll show you, actually, you know what? I will show you um, offline. I just don't want to show it to the world right now. All right, well, I guess you're you're in love with something. You're in love with this new skill that you're learning. I'm in love with this new skill that I'm learning. Um, I'm also, you know, um, becoming more in love with, this sound may sound sappy, but a little more in love with life and in, in myself, you know? And this is from, you know, having to deal with myself <laughs> in the past year in, in, in this pandemic and a lot of this a lot of the time unless i go home to my family a lot of the time is spent by myself yeah, so, um, yeah i had to <laughs> i had to learn to you know to, to be more in love with myself because i'm the only one that keeps me company 24 hours <laughs> it's true <laughs> so. uh well uh, thanks. Healthy love. Healthy love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thanks for doing this. Uh, Thank you. This is great. I had a great time in this conversation. Yeah. See? Maybe you'll start one of your own. Here's the thing. Here's another thing. I, when everybody goes right, I like to go left. Everybody goes right, I like to go left. There, there are so many podcasts right now. Like, I want to listen to so many that I just don't have the time to. Um, and, and two, like, I want to tell my stories and experiences in a different way. Sounds great. 
So I'll leave it to you, leave it to you, and let you know if that's what we did. So. Well, I'll, I'll keep it. I'll, I'll keep it up. We're nearing. Uh, we're nearing episode fifty. So uh, there you go. So, yeah, okay. so what's what's the ultimate goal? Keep doing this forever. So that's what you want Brings me, brings me joy. <laughs> brings me joy. I love talking to people. I love getting. There you go. Okay, okay. So it's the conversation having people like yeah constantly yeah. meeting new people yeah what, what, what's not to enjoy am i the longest podcast you did it's almost two hours no i've gone almost three i think i've gone three damn yeah. where did time where did time go you are absolutely right <laughs> well thank you Dave. Drop the mic on that one. <laughs> um, all right. Well, uh, just keep taking care of yourself. And, uh, yeah. Well, I'm I'm interested to hear what what this thing is. Yeah, I I honestly believe that you can can offer a lot of help with this. Yeah, we'll yeah. talk. We'll talk. Wait, okay. All right. Nice talking to you. Always. I'll see you. Come on. Thank <laughs> you.